Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? Well, the answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. When I started using anchor to do my podcast, it was so extremely easy that I haven't even bothered to look for another app to use. I love this app. It's the only one I deal with, the only one I even recommend, period. I recommend you get on there ASAP. If you want to start a podcast, this is definitely the place to go. It's easy. You can drive around and record. You can sit in your basement and record. You can uh, can do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start, anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Adam Rich from the Really Rich Podcast, and I wanted to talk today about morality. Where does it come from? Why do we have it? How do you know that it's correct? How can you trust in it? Because I've heard so many different people, depending on your walk of life, your perspective, um, your religious background, what you believe, atheist, non-atheist, I've heard so many different theories on why evolution or why morality exists even even through evolution. And here's the thing that here's the thing I really wanted to get into guys. If you if you think about it logically and philosophically, we do we have to get morality from a higher being outside of humanity, a standard that transcends humanity. It is something that goes beyond our own thoughts and our own opinions. And I know a lot of people disagree with that, and I'll I'll go through the different reasons as to why I believe what I do. Some people will say that they believe in evolution, it's morality comes from some evolutionary trait, or it's something that evolution just gives us with time. I've heard people say that um, that through evolution we've developed a consciousness, and through our consciousness we developed a set of rules that are best suited for our survival. However, there is a problem with that. There's the biggest problem, the number one reason to know that that is false, is that evolution is all about survivability. It's all about either gaining or losing factors or characteristics that will allow us to have a better chance at survival. Here's the problem, though. A, if a single-celled organism was the first, you know, portion of life or the first part of life and it evolved, the single-cell organism at one point didn't need a partner in order to survive, if that theory is correct. Now, if you want to better, if you want to give yourself, your species, a better chance for survival, why, if you could produce on your own, if you were asexual, if you could just reproduce on your own, why would you ever evolve into needing a partner? Why would we ever evolve into having male and female? Why is that a thing? Why would that ever exist? It doesn't make an ounce of sense. If you need If I'm a male and I need a female in order to survive the species, why would I do, why would we evolve that characteristics? I've never heard anyone ever explain that. No evolutionist, no scientist. Darwin himself had had no answer for that. So that part of it right there is, is a little off. Then fast forward, say you can get past all that and that doesn't matter. We're here now. Here's human beings. Whatever you believe we got here. Now we feel that it's best for our survivability to have morals. Well, then I have to challenge this. We all know, no matter what the circumstance is, that rape is wrong. We know that it is not okay under any circumstance to rape someone against their will. And I hate to be this blunt and this, you know, dive right into it like this, but this is very important. We know that even if the, the, the society depended on it, if there was one woman alive and a hundred men, 
And that woman said, you know what? I, I'm gay. I don't want to. I, I don't want men. I don't want to have sex with any of you. I, I, that's just I'm too bad. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Is it wrong to rape her? And the answer, of course, is yes. There's no circumstance under which it's okay to rape that woman. It's not, it's not okay for her. It's not, no matter how desperate the species is, no matter how desperate the society is for survival, if that woman does not want to be raped, it is wrong to rape her. And we know that. Like, I don't even know why that's even... I, first off, I've never even heard a scientist answer that question either. So when it comes to morality, it is obviously objective. It is not a subjective thing. I've heard many people say that it, we all make our own morality. No, you don't. You might not follow what you know to be right, you know, wrong or whatever, or what's right from wrong. You may not listen. You may not follow it. But we all know that it's wrong to cheat at a board game. If you're playing a board game with somebody and you know you're playing Monopoly and you know that you can do a little cheating and it will guarantee that you win, you still know it's wrong. And it feels wrong. It's not that it's not that you needed to be told that when you were a child. Somebody doesn't have to tell you that it's wrong to cheat to win. You feel that. And this is the point about morality. It's not about what we've decided as a society. It's what do we feel within us? What do we feel in our core? What is actually the instinct and the feeling? And and, and the funny thing is, is of the, of the best I've heard from an evolutionist is that we've you know, we've grown genetically. We our DNA has been altered to help us with morality to give us a morality and that's just absurd guys if you think about it if that's the case then a we would we would have never evolved you know to need a partner if we, if it was all about survivability we would have never evolved from asexual organisms we would have all just been like hey in order to care if you have the ability to carry on the species by yourself and that's the only thing that matters why would you ever develop the need for a partner you wouldn't it's just, it's absurd, guys. It's silly to think that way. And then on top of that, if you get all the way to the point of humanity and you know that your survival is dependent on rape, but that woman does not want to be raped, it's still wrong to rape her. If you have 100 people in a room and 99 people vote to beat up and ta- and rob the one, the one person, if 99 voted against the one, is it okay to beat up and rob that one? It, the 99 voted. That society, that group of people said it was okay. Why do we know deep down inside that it's still wrong? And the answer, guys, the only answer, the only logical answer is it's a feeling inside because there is a standard of right and wrong outside of humanity. It doesn't matter what society you go back to in the past or what society you may get to in the future. We all know that it's wrong to do evil things to others. We all know it's wrong to murder somebody who's innocent or who does not, who's just sitting around minding their own business. It is wrong to go up and shoot that person in the head. We know that. It's wrong just if a person's sitting in a chair, it's wrong just to kick the chair out from under him, even if you catch him. You know what I mean? It's not okay to just mess with people. And there's no evolutionary advantage to not messing with people. If you're making fun of somebody, this is another one that never gets talked about in the evolutionary scientific world. If Why is it wrong to make fun of people? It has no evolutionary benefit or disadvantage, advantage or disadvantage. There's to make fun of somebody and insult them. Why is that wrong? And there is no good answer, guys, other than because a being above us, a a higher standard beyond us says so. It's written. It says in the Bible, whether you believe the Bible or not, the answer to this question is at least explained whether you believe it or not. It's at least explained logically in the Bible. And the logical answer is even Paul said in the New Testament that God wrote it on our hearts. We know, meaning, he didn't mean that it's physically signed with a pen. It means that it's written on our hearts, meaning we know it within us. In your heart, you know what is right and what is wrong. 
And the Bible also talks about getting to an age of accountability, meaning if you're before a certain age where you don't know right from wrong, if something happens to you, if you were to die at a at an early age as a kid as a child and you did not know right from wrong, you are automatically guaranteed justice in heaven. You're not going to hell. You're not going to be God doesn't punish like that. He doesn't send you to hell if you don't know better. If you do know better and you still commit evil, knowing that you shouldn't, that's a different story. We're not talking about that. If you don't know better, he does not punish what you do not know. You are held accountable for what you know, for your knowledge. If you're a complete idiot, you're probably fine. (laughs) But if you're not, if you know some things, if you know right from wrong and you choose to do wrong, It's on you at that point, and you know that. You know it deep down inside, regardless how you feel about religion, God, the Bible, any of that. If you do something wrong, and it comes back to burn you, you know that you deserved it. Now, you may throw a tantrum, you may act like a little brat about it and not like the results, but deep down inside, you logically understand it's your effing fault. So the point is here... We all know morality. I've heard people say that, um, you know, they, they've, they've misconstrued that to say if you, that I'm there, or they think that I'm saying if you're not a Christian, then you can't be moral. Then you can't be a moral creature or follow a moral law or know right from wrong. That's phys- That's just not true. I'm explaining that if God puts it in us, then it doesn't mean he puts it only in Christians that have read the Bible. It means he puts it in humans. He puts it in all of us. We all no right from wrong, whether you've ever seen a Bible, you've ever even heard of a Bible, whether you know that there's a God or not, you know right from wrong. We feel it. And that feeling does not come from some evolutionary process that involves survival or else rape would be totally acceptable. Because if it's all about survival and carrying on and create and reproducing, then why is rape wrong? If, because we see this in the wild all the time. We see a lion run up to a female lion, a lioness, if you will, even if you won't. And the lion runs right up to the, the, the female lion, just does its thing for 10 to 15 seconds, then jumps off and calls it a day. Now, that looks like rape. I mean, especially when they're chasing after. We see this all the time, too, with squirrels, with birds. I see them in my neighborhood all the time. Birds are flying in different directions, and another one's right behind it. What do you think they're trying to get? It's it's clearly not consensual. So we see it all the time in nature that things rape. But nature, we're not talking about animals in nature. We're talking about human beings. We have a different set of rules. We have a different standard. We have a different consciousness. We have a different set of motor skills. We have a different, uh, capa- we have capabilities that far exceed any animal on the planet. We are different. And the reason we have morality and animals don't is because when it comes to the animals, like your evolution theory, animals do just want to get off and make new animals. They do just want to reproduce. I'm not saying it's a survival thing. I don't know. Maybe they just, maybe they're just horny. I don't know that. We don't know why animals do what they do. But the point is, there is no law in nature that says that it's wrong for an animal to rape another animal. We can look at it from an outside perspective and say, man, that ain't right. That female lion did not want any part of that, but she got it anyway. Now there's no, there's no there's no law uh, in in the animal in the lion world that's going to tell the lions, "Hey, that's not cool." But that being said, one thing that we can't possibly know or prove, maybe God does put it in their minds and they still don't listen, just like human beings. I don't know that. I'm not even making that claim. I'm just saying that is a possibility. It's possible but that it's not wrong at all in the animal world to rape to, for survival, for you to carry on your species. Maybe it's not wrong. I don't know. It is wrong in our society. And the funny thing about it is, we may, I've heard people say, well, we make rules. We change rules. We change our morality. No, we don't. We change what our laws accept, but we still know inside of us, no matter what the law says, it's not okay to murder an innocent. It's not okay to rape an unwilling person. It's not okay to molest children. It's not okay to cheat to win. And that and I'm talking even in like board games and stuff. Like I said, it's not 
it doesn't have to be a lawbreaker. Listen, and here's a as a matter of fact, this one just popped in my head, and I think it actually perfectly explains the difference between morals and laws. It's a law to not jaywalk. Well, at least in certain areas, it is in my city. You cannot jaywalk. It is a it is a misdem. It's a small crime. It's just like a little fine or whatever that you have to pay. But you're not allowed to do it. It's a rule. It's a law. You cannot jaywalk. I've jaywalked more times than I can count, and never once in my life have I felt bad about it. Now, I've I have had the thought like, man, I hope I don't get caught because then I'm going to have to suffer paying a fine. But I don't. But I don't think that it's wrong. For any any way, shape, or form, especially at nighttime when there's like no cars on the road, why on earth would it be wrong? It's still a crime, though. You're still breaking the law. Now, some cops may not enforce the law and blah, 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 and all that stuff, but it is still a law. The difference, though, is you don't feel a moral obligation to not jaywalk. You just know that the oppor- that if you do, there is a possibility that the consequence is a fine that you have to pay. But you don't feel heartbroken over it. You don't go, you don't lay down in bed at night and rethink your decision about jaywalking. That's different than morals. Laws are different than morals. And people get them confused. We say all the time, oh, we make laws for stuff. That's our moral. No, it's not our morals. Our morals tell you that it's wrong to cheat at a board game even if you won't get caught. There's no law against cheating at a board game so you don't get caught. I'm not going to get fined. I'm not going to get arrested. I'm not getting in trouble. It's wrong. It, here's, a, here's a great example, actually. In America, you have freedom of speech. You can say anything you want, and you're not going to get arrested for it. We know it's wrong to insult people and call them some kind of slurs or derogatory names or whatever. That's it. We know that it's not good. We know that it's wrong to do that to people, but you're not going to get arrested for it. And that's the point, guys. There is a moral law that is written on our hearts. We feel it deep inside. It is not the same as society coming up with laws. It's not the same as somebody, your parents telling you the rules when you're young. It's not the same. You feel it. You feel, if you cheat on your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you feel that it's wrong. You may never get caught. You may never pay a price or pay the fine or suffer for it, but you feel it inside. Nobody has to tell you that that's wrong to do that to your, to your partner, to your wife, your husband, your, your anything, even, even if it's not a sexual thing, even if it's like cheating, like in the sense of say you have a business partner and your partner wants to do one thing, you want to do another, and you go behind his back her or her back, and you do something without them. That's not cheating necessarily, but it is shady, and you know you shouldn't do it. Now, is there any laws or rules against doing that? No. No, not at all. You're allowed to do whatever you want as long as you're not breaking the criminal, you know, the, the actual law that gets you fined or arrested. But you can do shady things all you want. We feel it inside that it's wrong. And that doesn't come from a society in ancient times deciding what's okay and what isn't. That's laws. That's not morals. So, I like, when I hear people say that, oh, well, society decided what's best for... Who? Who's deci- whose society decided that? And why are they right? Why should you listen? Especially if it was some ancient society. Do you know how stupid we were in ancient times compared to today? Why on earth should we listen to that? We should make our own new one. And the, the, the last point that I want to make about morality, and I know that you people are going to believe whatever you want when I'm done, and that's fine, but I just want to show the points and let you make your own decision. I can respectfully agree to disagree. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. We can do that safely, calmly, peacefully, and all that, and we can have a discussion and a chat about it. We don't have to have, you know, I've heard a lot of people attacking and, and, and insulting and all that stuff, and I think it's unnecessary. But here's the thing. The last point that I wanted to make about the morality is when I've heard people say that, um, you know, that a society created it and we all just follow the laws and it's best for our survival, it's best for the species, best for this and best for that. Here's the the rub, is that if you believe there is no God, if you believe that this is the only life we have, and then once this life is over, you're in the dirt, lights out, you have no consciousness, you don't see anything, you don't feel anything, it's over, you don't even know you're dead, you don't even know it's gone, you don't even know that you existed because your consciousness ceases to exist. If that's true, based on this evolutionary theory, if that's true, why should you care about any moral law? 
Why should you care about anybody or how anybody feels? If this is the one and only life experience you will ever get to enjoy, and you have no idea when it's over, it could be over tomorrow, it could be over 100 years from now, you have no idea when it's over, but if you believe that there is no God, there is no afterlife, it's just evolution, and that we're just molecular machines going through the motions until our deaths, then why on earth do you care about anyone's feelings? Why would you care about the survival of the species? Why does that matter to you? Why would you care? Once you're dead, it's over. So who cares? Why would you care about carrying on your genes and passing it on to the next? Why would that matter? I know it sounds nice. It sounds good. And from a Christian standpoint, from a person that believes in God, I do believe it's important to care about people and try to do what's right for the next generations and all that stuff. But if you don't believe in God and you don't think there's an afterlife and you're not going to get judged for all the things that you do here, why on earth would you cooperate and listen to anybody? You, You should, if this is true, which I don't believe, if it's true that evolution is a thing or whatever and that we evolve for whatever we die and there's no afterlife and all that stuff, if that's true, then this is the only little temporary experience of consciousness you're ever going to get. Why on earth are you wasting time? You're wasting your time and your life and your happiness and your desire and your drive and persistence and, and, and everything, everything that you want out of life. You're sacrificing if you follow somebody else's moral code. So why would you waste your time like that? If this is the only existence you have, you should enjoy every second of it, living it however you want, doing whatever you want, right? I mean, that would make most sense. If I knew that I only had 80 to 100 years to live, screw everyone else, I'm living for me. But I don't think that. I think that that's absolutely wrong. I think that that's an idiotic way to live your life, even if it's true. Because if it's true and the lights go out, you have no idea what's going on. But let's say there is an afterlife. Even if you don't believe in one, let's say there is one. Let's say that you you die and all of a sudden the lights are still on. You still do have a consciousness. And there you are face to face with the creator of the of everything. What are you going to be able to say? I mean, if you live selfish and only for yourself and you don't believe or you don't acknowledge the existence of the one creator that made it all, then you're in some serious trouble. Now, if that creator that I'm speaking of does not exist, if it's all just pure fantasy and we just die and go in the ground, well, then I wouldn't know. I mean, the lights will go out and game will be over and I'll have no idea and my life will be gone and the rest of society will live on. But the point is, if you live with the mindset that morality somehow is just some societal thing or some social construct or something that evolution gave us and all the all, all these other nonsensical ideas, then you're missing the whole point of why we feel anything at all. We feel something because there is a standard outside of our bodies and outside of our minds that is the standard of right and wrong. There is an arbiter, a moral law giver, a person, a a being that created, that decided right from wrong. And then we feel and we know what is right, right from wrong because that standard exists somewhere else. It's not in us. It's not, it's, or it's not just something subjective with each person. It's not like somebody walks around going, yeah, rape's totally fine. Why wouldn't it be? Like nobody thinks like that. No one on in the history of the planet. Now you may be so evil that you don't care about rape. You, you think raping is totally fine, meaning you don't mind doing it. The point though is you're still going to feel no matter how evil you are and how much wrong you commit, you're still going to know deep down inside that it is not cool of what you're doing. It's not approved. Nobody wants you to do what you're doing. So when I hear people say that it's subjective because people are murderers and people are rapists, no, they're ignoring the moral law, that instinct that they feel inside. That doesn't mean it ain't there. That just means they don't care about it. So that's a huge difference, guys. You, We all know that it's wrong to murder we all know that it's wrong to cheat at a board. Have I ever cheated at a board game? Absolutely. And every single time I had a little feeling inside about whether or not I should do it. Now, why? Who said? Who told me? Who put that instinct inside of me to, to, for me to know that I shouldn't cheat at a board game? 
It's a board game. It's meaningless. When the game's over, nobody knows. Nobody cares who won. I've played so many games in my life with friends and family, and I have zero idea who won what. Like, it doesn't matter. But we still know it. That it's wrong inside to cheat, to lie, to steal, to kill, to do all these wild, awful things. We know that they're wrong, no matter what people, whatever kind of creation they come up with in their head about why it's wrong. It has to be a standard outside the human mind. And that is all I'm saying, guys. It doesn't, I'm not trying to tell you it has to be God. I think it is. I personally believe it's God. But I'm not trying to tell you that it absolutely has to be the God of the Bible. But it does have to be a standard that goes beyond human mind because it's objective, not subjective. And that's all I wanted to say about it, this, guys. If you have something, if you think I'm wrong, or if you have something to debate that or, or agree with, or, or just a discussion that you want to have, if you, any, any perspective, I want to hear, guys. So I don't want attacks. I don't want insults and all that. If you want to go that route, cool. We can play that game. I'd rather not. But if you have something to contribute to that conversation, maybe you have, maybe I'm not seeing something. I'm very open to everything. I know that I don't know everything. So I believe what I say, but that I, that doesn't mean that I'm not wrong. I could be. So if you guys have something better or a different angle or something I'm missing, please let me know. You can get a hold of me. You can leave me a message through the Anchor app. Um, uh, you, through the Anchor app, you can, or you can leave me a voice message, I should say, through the Anchor app. If you want to DM me or get a hold of me or whatever, you can get a hold of me on Snapchat and YouTube at uh, Really Rich. Um, on Instagram, it's really rich podcast or a jam rich. That's my, uh, podcast and my personal page. Um, on Twitter, it's, it's Adam rich or I'm sorry, uh, really rich Adam on TikTok, It's, it's Adam rich, I T S Adam rich, no space, no apostrophe, none of that. And then on LinkedIn, Adam rich founder and host of the really rich podcast. You guys can find me anywhere on any of these. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys about any of this. So I love you guys. And I thank you so much. Please if follow my TikTok channel. That's where I've been doing a lot more of this and a lot more elaboration and, um, comments and talk, everything. So TikTok is my main one right now, but anywhere else you guys can find me. I love you guys. And I thank you for listening. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace. I'm out of here. Thank mm-hmm. you.